Genius Brain listeners, this podcast is brought to you by NordVPN. If you're going online and you're doing it unprotected out there, my friends, what are you doing? Everybody is snoot, snoot, snooping on your stuff, and that's where a VPN comes in. You need to browse safely, right? I've been using NordVPN for quite a while, and I freaking, freaking like it. I always talk about browsing the internet and doing it safely in a protected way, and you got to do it with NordVPN. My friends, cybersecurity now and cyber threats are a huge, huge thing that everybody's talking about. And that's why, once again, if you're online and you're not using a VPN, specifically NordVPN, you don't know what you're doing. It's super easy. So why don't you just get it, my friends? Listen, here's the exclusive deal. Grab the NordVPN deal. Go to nordvpn.com slash geniusbrain and get extra subscription time. Try it risk-free now with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring our show. Genius Brain listeners, this podcast is brought to you by Fume. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor. We're talking about Fume, my friends. We are sponsored by Fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad in bad habit is wrong. So instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? My friends, my Fume is freaking cool. Ooh, the taste. The first time I tried it, amazing. Feels super refreshing. The feel, shoot, it's super well-weighted, perfectly balanced, and extremely extremely fun to fidget with. Um, how beautiful is the real wood on it, the shapes. You feel really cool using it, man. I have it. It has like this natural wood look to it. And I got to tell you guys, man, the taste, pretty freaking amazing. I freaking love it. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Join fume in accelerating humanity's uh, break up from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code genius to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code genius to save an additional 10% off your order today. The way that you can use emotional truth in entertainment, art, or whatever, right? Eminem killing his wife. Yeah. Did he? No. No. <laughs> no, but it was a hit song. Stan, you know, did that guy really no it, maybe the emotion the truth behind that is like he had a very rocky relationship with his ex-wife the other one being his fans are crazy as fuck yeah right but did these stories really happen no he he, he painted a picture he told a story kind of thing. in five four three two one what's up everybody welcome to another episode of the genius brain podcast i am your host david so and then we have the two eds together dude what's up the fraternal edge you guys always mix them up every time <laughs> I, I sometimes i tag them wrong too <laughs> today is a very interesting day my friends oh, have you guys heard of the um have you guys heard of knees over toes knees over uh, toes. there was this guy he started this program called uh like atg uh i, I forgot what it's called exactly but he uh played basketball and sports his whole life and he, you know i have like fucked up knees mm -hmm. and so his stuff has i don't know this phone listens to everything that i do <laughs> so if i talk about my fucked up knees guess what pop, pops on instagram yeah knees over toes guy and i actually heard about him through I, i've seen his stuff constantly i actually bought his book a while ago and i was applying some of his stuff a while back but I, I didn't really start doing it until recently because uh, have you guys ever went grunion hunting here? No, I mean I know I know of it. I, I, Khalif actually put me on it. Yeah. <laughs> so we went grunion hunting and I was having yeah. so much fucking fun. Yeah. I was like juking these fishes and like pushing kids over to grab this fish. Yeah. Well, I fucking popped my knee yeah. like about a couple of months ago. Okay. And I haven't I didn't feel any pain. I didn't know. Yeah. And then the next morning my fucking knee swelled up. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> I couldn't walk. Rewind. What is runyon hunting? No, oh, grunion. 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 So grunions are these like little silver fish yeah. that during mating, mating season, they just wash up up shore. You just grab them and you yeah. eat them. It's, Hell no. It's <laughs> like, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. If you're <laughs> philosophobia, I'm not. If I'm you not. if you hit if you hit like a good spot, it's like hundreds of them just like swarming. All over. Free yeah. food. Gross. Yeah. Zing gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we went grudging hunting. I got a bunch. I cooked it all, everything else. And the next day my knee swelled up. I haven't felt that type of pain since I had it popped like a jujitsu. So I was like, what the fuck happened? And, and it sucks because once you damage it, everything that you've done to rehab it goes backwards again. So mm -hmm. I was back at square one where I would try to do a lunge and my knee would rock like this. I couldn't even do a lunge. So I started doing the ATG stuff, the, the knees over toe stuff. This is not a paid sponsorship, by the way. Mm -hmm. But I started doing some of his stuff as programming. And my fucking knee feels so much better. Like, it's fucking nuts. I've done so many different types of rehab shit. Yeah. And this fucking random Instagram ad from this guy is like saving my fucking knee because I don't want surgery. So mm. there's just some series of exercises? Yeah, so like I guess, you know, have you guys 
when you start learning how to do squats, like the, the common thing that everybody would mention was that your, your knees aren't supposed to go past your toes, right? Yeah. They say mm -hmm. that it's bad form, it's the pressures on your kneecap. For him, through his own research and his own injuries and everything else, he started going backwards and saying like, actually, if you look at like, um, like Asian people or whatever, you know, we do like the smoking squat. Mm -hmm. That was like one of his <laughs> yeah, references. Kimchi squat, kimchi yeah. right? <laughs> it's like, how come these old Asian people have great fucking knees? It's like, because they smoke cigarettes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's true. Their it's true, life. though. It's you true. Know? You would get started early, man. 11 years, 12 years old. Yeah, so, they, you know, he was doing his research of like, okay, well, what the fuck is with these Asian people? Like, they're, you know, they their knees are fine till their old age. Like, they're going up, picking up their grandchildren. Yeah. They're going way past <laughs> over their toes. There was like um, a, a research he did about, I think it was Asian or Russian, about farmers who, uh, they plow their fields, but they do this thing where they move backwards and it also helps with their knee health as mm, well. Right. Mm. So all this other stuff I've been applying and I've been able to kind of get into a deeper squat, which I haven't been able to do in two or three years. So I've been doing that fucking shit. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm joining the NBA soon, guys. Nice. No, 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 no. <laughs> no the, the complete next. opposite. You sound like an old motherfucker. Nah. <laughs> talking about We're gonna see at the stretches next stretches and yeah. and knee. Health. I just want to be able to smoke a cigarette and squat down again. You're gonna see you at the next ISA basketball tournament. <laughs> yeah. No, Simu won't let me there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna choose either Simu or me, and they're yeah. they're gonna Is choose. Who's it. coming? No, I know he's just gonna do a backflip out of nowhere like he always does. Yeah. Shout outs to to my best friend uh <laughs> then anyway, speaking about people that nobody likes um <laughs> i'm kidding i just i can't help it oh, he's, he's perfectly fine got a segue, got a segue like nah, that he did, huh? he did great in barbie dude he played himself it was yeah. uh so hassan minhaj right has been under a lot of fire recently and i and i sent um the both eds to, to go ahead and read up about this because there's a lot to unpack on this stuff right yeah and Listen, just to give a, a background, like I haven't really watched too much of Hassan's stuff, right? And if I were to be straightforward about it, I, I he's not very funny to me. Um, mm. And I've tried watching his things, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, like I wouldn't put him in like a pure class of comedy, like a pure comedian. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So like when I – so I was telling this to Ed outside. So years ago when he brought out his special. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know who he was mm -hmm. and, you know, he was becoming like a hotter comic or whatever, whatnot. That was the conversation I wasn't a part of. So people were like, oh, have you seen this Hassan Minhaj stuff or whatever? And I saw this thing pop up on Netflix and I watched it. And I was like, and I watched it halfway through. I was like, I don't want to listen to a TED talk. And so I'm like, OK, cool, whatever. And then I was talking to somebody else like, oh, did you watch Hassan stand up? I was like, no, I saw his TED talk. I, I didn't know he had a stand up on Netflix as well. <laughs> and then he sent me a link and I was like, wait. <laughs> That's the special. You saw it. <laughs> I was like, well, I did see it. Yeah. I thought it was a TED talk. Yeah. yeah. And so this kind of goes into this conversation, not about the topic that we're going to talk about, but a lot of comics do talk about this. And I think a lot of people who consume comedy talk about this too. It's like, what is this shit? Like, is this stand up or is it not? Like, there's no punchlines, there's no jokes. Yeah. And it's just somebody lecturing you about their life and what you should do emotionally, right? I think it's because he came from The Daily Show. Exactly. Ah, he was a Daily Show correspondent. That's how I became aware of him. Um, yeah, because he was one of the correspondents uh, there on The oh, Daily so Show. Oh, so he already started politicized. Yeah, he yeah, came yeah. from a political... So it's like, when, when Trevor Noah was still hosting it. Let's speak a little closer to the mic. Oh, it, yeah. it's when Trevor Noah was still hosting it, so... Oh, yeah. okay. See, now this starts to make a little more sense, right? Because yeah. when I was watching... And he had a couple of other specials or another special that came out too, which is what a lot of people are referencing. But, mm -hmm. you know, when I was watching his stuff, I was like, where's the jokes? Is there supposed to be a punchline somewhere? Am I supposed to laugh somewhere in this? Yeah. Or is this like his motivational right. speech? It's, it's kind of like an extension of, you know, it's political comedy, I guess. Okay. But um, he had... I've seen... I saw that first special... And then Netflix gave him a whole ass TV show of their own kind of daily show, a political news comedy show, right? Because mm. everybody's doing that. It's just like late night talk show turned into political comedy talk show. Because look at uh, Stephen Colbert. Um, that Those late night shows were not political. Like, yeah, they yeah. were just irrelevant. They were goofy. They were stupid. Um, old man before him with the glasses and David Letterman David Letterman yeah, yeah. he was not political mm -hmm. right and then Colbert comes in and he comes from that background also on the daily show also yeah. on the daily oh. show when John Stewart was hosting it yeah, yeah yeah he was part of the daily show then he got his own show which was the Colbert report and then from there they they hired him to replace David Letterman and they were like well now 
he can't be political, right? Because they're thinking Dave Letterman wise, but Colbert is just that's the way he is. And so he actually started beating um, Jimmy Fallon in the ratings because he oh. was talking about politics and stuff. Yeah. I mean, Trump was really hot at the time too. Right. So I guess that's the flavor from the past decade. Like political comedy is getting a lot of views. And so the show on Netflix is like an extension of that uh, special where it's just a big PowerPoint presentation. Mm. And what they, he talks about the news. He talks about the issues. He has amazing graphics, by the way. The animation on those are excellent. You yeah, know, it, it's just very political. He gets the facts and then he throws in some jokes here and there. But he is, I guess, I guess you want to say one of those woke comedians in a <laughs> sense where his mission behind it is for, you know, better human rights, you know, equality, equity, and just mm. very liberal minded. Just not it's, making people laugh. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's basically <laughs> political and social commentary. Uh, with a little bit of joking in there, yeah. right? It's a tie to a lot of his personal experience. Right, yeah, right? so this is this is where the the conversation really starts about his stuff, right? So Hassan has this whole thing of it was a, it was a journalist that decided to dig a little deeper into the material that he was creating, right? And it, it, it was like originally a piece on him, and then he was retelling those same stories. And they're journalists, right? So they had to research, research. <laughs> you know, to confirm these. You got fact checked pretty yeah. much, and then the article turned into what it became. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's such a. It's very weird, right? So the basically for you guys who don't know what's going on, the 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 biggest conversation that's stemming from this is how much is a comedian allowed to lie, right? And. With Hassan, and we're going to go through the very specific examples, right? But just to give a general scope of this, he's telling these stories of like specifically racial and political atrocities that have happened to him personally that turned out never fucking happened. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Never happened at all. The truth is maybe I would say if I'm ballparking 10%. Yeah. And the rest is blatant lying. We're not talking about bending the truth. We're talking about <laughs> outright lie he said he said it's it's the, it was his emotional truth which, which is just the we're gonna get for to bullshit. that yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. we're gonna get to that right? yeah so let's talk about the, the first thing that he did right or one of the first examples that from what i remember it was the whole uh, the anthrax scare yeah right so if you guys daughter so anthrax was this whole thing you know back in the day if, i'm pretty sure the young people don't even remember this shit but it's basically uh it's poison, right? Yeah. It's a powder poison, goes into your system, fucking kills you or some shit, makes you bleed from your eyes or some bullshit like that. Um, so his whole thing was that because of his political humor and the th stuff that he says that he is now being personally attacked because he is this beacon of hope of truth or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so now his family's being attacked and because he got this envelope that had a powder substance, which was anthrax. It got to his daughter. They had a rush to the hospital. And his wife says this emotional thing of like, I don't care what the fuck you do, but if this affects my family, I will fucking leave you in a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So where's the uh, punchline to this? Where's, <laughs> yeah. the, where's the joke? And, and that was also, uh, I guess, following him talking about Jamal Khashoggi and that whole incident. And, Explain who Jamal Khashoggi is. Uh, well, he was the dude who got disappeared, basically. Yeah, but yeah. He was a journalist <laughs> for the Washington Post. Yeah. Um, a resident of the United States, not a citizen yet, but he was working on that. And so he had to go to the embassy, an embassy. I don't know why he ended up in the Turkish embassy. Yeah. And then um, the prince of Saudi Arabia, MBS, I, I don't exactly know his full name, Mohammed bin Salam. I, I forget. We call Mohammed. Yeah. <laughs> um, sent some assassins to cut him to pieces while he was alive. Yeah. Apparently, there's an audio recording. <laughs> I don't know how they have an audio recording of it, but for the, for the Instagram, <laughs> yeah. for the gram. for the gram selfie. Yeah, they cut him to pieces, but Trump did nothing about it. Um, it, it just happened to him, and yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know where Hassan Minaj thinks he, <laughs> you know, applies himself to that, but he basically, I don't know. All of these lies have a tie towards him being victimized. Yes. Well, yeah, it, it, him being victim, victimized and also him appearing as a hero mm. in some instances, right? Yeah. 
and this is where this 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 starts to have this conversation, right? Where I, I think what I really disliked about his approach and the way that he was answering the journalist's question, like questioning his like validity, right? Everything we're gonna get to this, where he says, Well, no, this didn't happen, but it's my stories are 70% emotional truth. <laughs> this is one of the most laughable fucking statements I've ever heard in my life. It reminds right? me of alternative facts, Alternative right? facts, <laughs> right? It's like, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? Aren't you supposed to be an intelligent human being? And when we say stuff like emotional truth, right? Maybe that's a conversation that you have with your fucking wife. You know and what I'm therapy. saying? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. With the therapist, not with your wife. Right. Right. Yeah. Not with the, co- and this is, this is why people are like, well, co- comedians lie. I was like, listen, Comics do embellish the truth to make a, a, a story that actually happened funnier. 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 That's or, the key. Or if it's not true, it's yeah. ridiculous. I'll right. give you a great example, right? right? Dave Chappelle's, one of his funniest bits was talking about him in a su- when he was in a subway where that homeless person <laughs> yeah, was jacking that. off and holding his dick and holding <laughs> yeah. people hostage. Yeah. It's so fucking ridiculous. We know it's dumb. It's just a stupid, stupid scenario. Yeah. Did Did David Chappelle actually do a Matrix move on the bus to avoid sperm? <laughs> right, exactly. No. But it's funny. <laughs> yeah. Or was was there a baby on a street corner selling, selling drugs? drugs. <laughs> exactly. Like, baby. <laughs> yeah. No. But it's fucking hilarious. Like yeah. we know it's not true. It's right, just right? a stupid fucking scenario talking about how ghetto this area yeah. is, right? It's these weird, like the, the, possible hi- hypotheticals. Yeah. The know? the emotional truth in that joke is that he's a black man afraid to be in the hood. Yeah. yeah. That's the yeah. joke exactly. that he himself is afraid of. That. And we know that this is a fake story off jump. We yeah. already know. Yeah. So with Hassan's thing, it's like he's telling the story because it, it's true fact. And by the way, he's using real people that yeah. fucking exist. Well, yeah. see, that's that's like a whole other conversation in and of itself. Cause I mean, but I think it's all stemming from what type of character this dude is, right? And, and narcissist, right? A narcissist. Um, he's a good delusional, guy. <laughs> right? He's a good looking he's guy. A he's a liar. Tall and yeah. So a I grifter. Yeah. Definitely yeah. a grifter, right? It, he is. His lies are so fucking ridiculous in the comedy realm. Like, I'll, I'll give you another example of mine, right? So I told a story on this podcast of when I went to South Pasadena. There was like this gym, and I got you know this fucking random dude attacked me at the gym, right? How many? How much of that was embellished, and how much was that true? Was there a guy there? 100%. Was there a dude that fucking attacked me? 100%. The stuff that's embellished is me saying like, oh, when he grabbed me, it sounded like a DJ scratching me because yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing a windbreaker. <laughs> but the actual thing happened, a real yeah. person attacked me and yeah. I got a black eye. Right. These things actually fucking happened. Now imagine if I told that story, right? And I said, and none of that shit was true, but I said, hey, but you know what? In reality, Somebody out there did a, got attacked, Asian hate. Yeah. So the point is, is that our people are getting attacked. That's right, they are, I didn't. So I'm actually using this thing to make myself look better and for people to pity me. Mm-hmm. I'm putting myself here so I can tell this story so I look amazing. Yeah. That's fucking bullshit. People would jump down my throat. They're like, wait, that wasn't true. So are you just using other people's tragedies to make yourself look really good? Yeah. That's essentially what this fuck face is doing. Yeah. So the other example was also the homecoming story. Right, right. So in that first special, he talks about a story where he um, has a prom date set up with this white girl. Um, I don't know if we've mentioned yet, Hassan Minaj is an Indian American Muslim, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. And so he shows up to the house, um, tuxedo, flowers. And when he goes in, she's already putting a corset on, on some other else. dude, right? Yeah. And her parents were like, it's just not a good fit. Right. You know? Doesn't want to be seen with the brown boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then the punchline later on is that she ended up marrying an Indian man, right? you know, in the future. And he somehow implements that his rejection, I don't know, enlightened her. I, some shit. It was bullshit. But the, yeah, but the, it was all lies. Yeah, the problem with that is... Their family received threats for years yes. because of that, right? And and when all this comes to light, Hassan has no apologies. He's not apologetic at all. Matter of fact, he doubles down, double down on saying it's yeah. emotional truth. And you know, it's, like how shitty of a human being can you be to this person? That's who what you I'm said, saying. She said, "Oh, we're actually friends. We're on really good terms." But you don't give a fuck that you fabricated this whole fucking story. You got this fucking girl docs, and you're like, it's emotional truth. No. You lied. Exactly. You fucking piece of shit. You fucking lied, and then you almost fucked somebody else's life over. Well, 
He did. He yeah. did fuck them over because they were getting threats. They were legitimately they getting threats for years. So yeah. I don't know if I heard this right. Did he invite her to that show yeah. and he told that story? So yeah. she's sitting there. He's telling this embellished lie. Um, Not even embellished story, just a just lie. A lie. <laughs> Straight well, up a lie. So the, <laughs> apparently what she says was that- I rejected he, him way before. Yeah, he asked her three days before homecoming. Right, she right. already had a date. And so she said, no, I already have a date. And it, that was that. Mm -hmm. But that whole thing where he showed up to her door, like, and then it was like- Yeah, and the, there. the objective of that story too, once again, isn't a joke. The yeah. end, there is no punchline. The, the the thing that he's saying is like, fuck you, Whitey. This is what you get. Yeah. I'm successful. Look at me. You fucked up because you didn't go to prom with me. And now I changed this person's life. I'm 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 the Messiah. Yeah. Look what I did for <laughs> right. her. Exactly. Dude, that's that that's the whole Narcissist. thing about this. Yeah. He's fucking nuts. He's 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 like delusional. It, it's like, look, you can't emphasize a narrative about victimization and heroism. And when you get called out on the bullshit, act like, well, it's no biggie. Because uh, it's again, it's based, yeah. my, based on my emotional truth. Your emotional truth in that moment was rejection. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so if if the rejection wasn't enough, it's like you had to make a bigger, crazy yeah, had to lie. make it about race. Yeah, you know? make it about race as to why he was rejected. He's for fucking, some agenda. It's like, it's it's coping at its finest. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this, this is like another version of like Carlos Mencia. He's like, yeah. uh, I think it's it's more egregious than Carlos yeah. Mencia to be honest with you, because people are actually getting hurt as a result of this. Uh, whether it's emotion, well, hopefully not physically, but you know, they they, they have been attacked, right? And the fact that, well, I mean, I think even aside from the whole prom date thing, what kind of sums it up is the anthrax lie. The yeah. fact that he's willing to use his family as pawns to up himself, I think that sums it up of who this guy is. So his, his emotional truth was, my wife threatened to divorce me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's, the, what's the story behind that? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Which never happened. Never yeah. happened. It never even happened. No, he's like, you, he's okay using his own daughter as like fucking comedic fodder. That's what fodder. I'm saying. That's With, what I'm saying. And not even comedic fodder. Where is the joke? No, yeah, there's, it's, not mm. the, it's not comedy. It's, it's again to elevate his, himself. I'll give you, yeah, and I'll give you a greater example, right? So if his idea is that, well, this stuff does happen in real life, then why don't you just tell their stories, mm -hmm. right? And then you being such a great comic, why don't you go ahead and make it fucking funny, you jackass, yeah. you <laughs> fucking piece of shit, you trash bag? Is your life so fucking, ter like, so good that you have no stories to tell? I'm pretty sure you do have stories to tell, but instead, the end, that's the problem that I have with him, too. I think this is the biggest issue. It's like, I bet you he is a good writer, right? He worked for The Daily Show. So you're a great writer. You know how to make things quote unquote funny or you know how to create material. Engaging. Exactly. Yeah, like get your audience sucked into what you're saying. They're, they're left silent. They're not laughing anymore. Mm -hmm. It's serious. But it's like, it's fucking bullshit. Yeah. yeah. You know? So the thing is, it's like, so you have these skills, but the end goal is evident. The, the Your true stories doesn't lead to you looking like an amazing person. Right. Mm. So your goal wasn't to make people laugh. It was to just put yourself up here to say, look, I'm doing this for you guys. I'm I'm your political messiah. Yeah. I'm doing this for everybody. Yeah. Everybody look so at me. Let me I'm represent you. Heat. I'm taking <laughs> yeah. the heat for the sake of representation. He's a martyr. He's, He's a, a martyr. hero. He's a victim. Yeah. All, all in one for the sake of... Uh, comedy. Somebody it's, beat this uh, fool's ass, please. Progressive comedy. It, well, he, he also says, too, that, you know, when people come to his show, that they're expecting an emotional roller coaster, you know? And so it, it, again, justifying why he's doing what he's doing and why he's telling the stories that he's telling. And it's like, nah, bro. So, I, like, for, for me, I don't think this is a conversation necessarily of uh, how much can comedians lie? You know what I mean? I, I think it's a matter of like what you lie about. Yeah. You know? Like, like look at when lately Dave Chappelle has has these serious moments towards the end of his of his uh, comedy specials, right? And those serious moments when it gets quiet, like is dealing with real shit and, it, and not about some scary thing that happened to him and his family. Right. Like – that real shit of when he was victimized, like that joke was when, when he got hit with a snowball. Yeah. And those kids called him the N-word. And what was the punchline? He made his mom suck his dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, drop the charges. Yeah. That's the joke. Right. Yeah. But Clearly. the emotional truth is the, the shit that happened to him. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, maybe he's just bad at 
you know, um, separating that line for what people, you know, or I don't know if there's it's hard the for unwritten rules. Path. Bro, that's like compulsive lying, though. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't I don't even think it's a matter of he's having a hard time <laughs> distinguishing yeah. that no, line. And, 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 you know, like we're using Dave Chappelle, too, as a great example, because Dave does intertwine a lot of serious topics with his, yeah, exactly. his stand up. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we're left laughing our fucking ass off. And for him and Dave is not praising himself. Yes. There is no self gratification of him putting himself up. Like, if he told that story about his trans friend who committed suicide, right? And what if we found out she hey, did it? She, she didn't, didn't exist, she, right? Oh, she didn't, she's alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And she comes out. She goes, "Wait, I didn't die, and I didn't come out to you at all. In fact, I didn't like your stand up at all. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm not even trans. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking yeah, about? Or like Dave Chappelle's like. And I jumped off a building. Yeah. Like, I killed myself. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> but I came back for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then Dave goes, well, this stuff does happen. And it's my emotional truth. You, Dave Chappelle's career would disappear exactly, like that. Yeah. And let's even go even further, right? How many times have we seen like online um, of like young ladies being held accountable for lying about rape accusations, right? And mm. what if their response was, well, it does happen to women. Right. It's my emotional <laughs> right. truth. That's how I felt in the moment that it could happen to you me. You would fucking wreck these women if exactly. they did that, right? Exactly. So why does he get a fucking pass? He doesn't. He doesn't. I, and I think, you know, he's he's catching the flack that he rightfully deserves. And, you know, he was, uh, I think, in many people's eyes, a front runner to take over as host. That's gone. That yeah. ain't going to happen no more. He's not going to become the host of Daily Show after yeah. this. You, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. If, the, if it happens, bro, yeah. like... Fuck I'm, this, I'm on it. the fence of yeah. I don't think he's going to lose that much opportunities. Which yeah. I think is just uh, so stupid. It just kind of goes to show like you could be the most untalented person in the fucking room and you can make it as far as you want, dude. Yeah. Here's the thing. I think he – what I meant by him not understanding the unwritten rules of maybe comedy or whatever, I don't know. I think wrong – the wrong – it was the wrong medium to be like that. If he was to write a screenplay, yeah, it's like – he understands the emotion of what he felt, right? But on the screen and in the story, in order to help the audience feel like he did, he needs a story to do that, right? I mean, although in the moment he felt that way, it maybe wasn't that extravagant. In a screenplay, maybe you want to play it up. So it's like, dude, write a movie, write a TV yeah. show <laughs> to, you know, tell these stories. Yeah. It's like fictionalized. He was, he was trying to say this is loosely based on a true story. But instead, what he said, this is my biopic. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> this is what he did. Yeah. And like people gravitated toward. Here's the thing, too. Like because he's in the political realm and he's talking about truths that are very serious topics. And once again, I'm going to reiterate this. He used real fucking people. No, I, I know, man. And look, when he does something like that, when it when anytime, bro, you're talking about something that's like politically charged, emotionally charged, racially charged, right? And he's talking about it like as it's a matter of fact, it's truth. Then you're sowing doubt and fear and ignorance yes. into these people, right? Mm -hmm. Because people now are saying, oh, they had a, like a preconceived notion of white people. Now they hear this story. Oh, yeah, that's what that, I knew it. That is white I people. I knew it. Yeah, that's I knew white people are like that. Or I knew black people are like that. Or, you know, I knew brown people are like that. Whatever the case is. I mean, and that's the danger of what he's doing. He's, he's framing it around truth. Exactly. And, you know. Somebody, I saw a video where somebody says, and I very much agree with this person. They were like, we live in a world now where everything is so racially charged. Sometimes it's very hard to get along with somebody because you have a preconceived notion about somebody before you even meet them because of stories like this, right? Which do happen. But then when you start doing this stuff where you start lying, it gives those people who are already sick of getting shitted on all the time. They go, you're crying wolf. I dismissive. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you're not doing anything good here. Like what, what is this? It doesn't make, he's. Juicy Smollett. I was just gonna <laughs> yeah, say Juicy Smollett. Ju Juicy Smollett. Well, I forgot his yeah. real name, but his name is Juicy, Juicy now. Yeah. Yeah. Look, okay, so like you same know what? Same shit. Same shit. Hey, Juicy, you get a pass now too, right? You didn't do anything fucking wrong, even though you lied about uh, what's it called, the hate crime where he it was like a lynching. Yeah. Where the, the, for some reason they poured like, bleach on him. They put a rope around his neck. Yeah. At, at a subway. Yeah. Please, dude. 
every black person knew that story was fake immediately. <laughs> Automatically. It made no sense. Like you, like you're the guy on power, which no white people watch at all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they recognized you, the most light-skinned dude of all time. Yeah. And they decided to attack you. And the funniest thing about that story, if you guys don't remember, was that the people that he hired to do this were two African dudes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Comedy. So yeah. The, I think one of the other problems that was mentioned I heard was that for the black community too, when they're watching something like this, because I, I heard it from a um, this podcast from a black voice where he he was saying, you know, we're drawn in and we empathize with you because of the the black experience in America, and for us to understand that you went through this too, we consider you an ally. But then you come around, and you you just make this shit up when we live it. Yeah. It's like fuck you. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. Fuck you, dude. Yeah, you it's, know it's it's um it's it's an insult. I'm just gonna know? do that now too. Like every time somebody talks about what they went through, I'm just gonna mirror it. You know, <laughs> and, and then at the end, it's like, did you go through it? No, but emotionally, yeah. I told you it was yeah. true. <laughs> so yeah. when basically when he says emotional truth, and I hate we're in an age now that this is the, my biggest pet peeve. Everybody has a specific type of adjective, a title, or a, something to attach to. It's like, oh, I was late today. Oh, actually, I suffer from um, late dystrophobia. It's like, what's that? Yeah. It's like where I have this condition where I always show up late. <laughs> or you're a piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I, I I get so sick of this. And my, my biggest contention with this as well is that people are so full of shit now, they don't even know what the fuck they're saying. What is the biggest thing that people say? When you meet me, don't judge me by how I look and who I am. Like, don't judge a book by its cover. I don't like titles. And then automatically, they, they go to titles. Like, this is what I am. Like, yeah. no, you do like titles. Yeah. You like being defined by something. And in fact, you can't even say who you are, what you are, what you do without putting a title to you. This is who you are. So don't give me this bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And I, I dislike, that's why when I heard that thing, emotional truth, stop making up shit. Yeah. Stop making up things for you lying. Just say, I lied. It's my emotional truth. And I've went through this with people personally, like not too long ago, like where this person was screaming at the top of her lungs about all the lies she was doing. And she goes, it's my truth. It's my oh truth. My God. And she's screaming. And everybody was like listening to her as a group of friends going, it didn't happen though. Yeah. And like, yeah. no, but it's my truth. That's it's how, my truth. That's how she felt. Right? When, yeah. Oh my God. I went, I went through that shit too. So like, um, Basically, I, I gifted somebody a, a guitar. I told them to take care of it and all that. And then um, I walked in on them tearing it apart. They they pulled it apart and stuff. And I was like, yo, what are you doing? Right? She's like, what? I'm doing this. And I was like, I, I, I told you that the Aerosmith guy set all this up. And it didn't matter. She didn't even know who Aerosmith was. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know? yeah. <laughs> so I was just like... Oh my God. And I was just upset, right? And then that kind of made our relationship weird as friends. And then later we had a smoke sesh, you know, and we, we hashed it out, right? And she told her side and she said, I came in blazing. Like I put my hand to the guitar. I was like, what are you doing? Stop. You don't know what you're doing. Like, I didn't say any of that. I was from my perspective and what I'm, I remember being like shocked and really upset at myself because I'd given this guitar this yeah. to her. Right, listeners, this podcast is brought to you by NordVPN. If you're online surfing around, snooping around, doing whatever the heck you're doing, I don't care what it is, and it's none of my business. It's none of your aunt's business, none of your mom's business, and it sure as heck is none of the business of those people out there who's just looking around to see what you're doing, trying to steal your information. Well, that's where NordVPN comes in. And it just doesn't go for web browser. We're talking about surfing the internet in general or just watching videos online, YouTube, uh, Netflix, whatever that it is, you should get a VPN. And if you've been online without getting NordVPN, you're doing it unprotected and you need to be on your cybersecurity shizzle, my friends, because those cyber threats be approaching all over the place. And that's where NordVPN comes in. This is an exclusive deal. Grab the NordVPN deal. Go to nordvpn.com slash genius brain and get extra subscription time. Try it risk-free now with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring our show. This podcast is brought to you by few, my friends. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor or some, some other BS. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and they took 
a look at the problem in a different way. Not everyone or everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habits easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and a designed, and it's designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing anxiety while breaking your bad habit. My friends, my friends, my friends, surprise. The taste, the first time you try it, is a lot more flavorful than you thought, and it just feels so refreshing. The taste, the taste, the taste. I can't stop saying it because let me tell you something. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code genius to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code genius to save an additional 10% off your order today. The way that you can use emotional truth in entertainment, art, or whatever, right? Eminem killing his wife. Yeah. Did he? No. No. No, <laughs> but it was a hit song. Stan, you know. Did that guy really, no, it, maybe the emotional truth behind that is like, he had a very rocky relationship with his ex-wife. The other one being his fans are crazy as fuck. Yeah. Right. But did these stories really happen? No, he, he, he painted a picture, he told a story kind of thing. Right. And this yeah. is what I mean with like movies and TV shows who do that too, like biopics, right? Mm -hmm. Some biopics you'll watch and you're like, that, that didn't happen. Yeah. Right. But like, um, did you see the Steve Jobs movies? Yes. The one with Ashton Kutcher and then the one with Michael Fassbender, right? Mm -hmm. Michael Fassbender one is far superior. A, because um, Aaron Sorkin wrote it. And, and the, he's also a better actor. Yeah, he's a much better actor. <laughs> yes. And the other one I, I learned was the um, Ashton Kutcher one. Like the guy who wrote it was just some Nepo baby. His dad finance the entire movie of course and it said my son has to write it <laughs> oh no and so basically it, <laughs> if you see that it's like a book report of the steve jobs biography which i also read so it's like if you watch the it's called uh jobs for ashton kutcher the ashton kutcher one it's like facts of mm -hmm. it's a biopic and then a bit of embellishment right and then there's like it's like his entire life story right but then the what, what was the purpose? What is your emotional truth? It was just to sell the fact that Steve Jobs was a genius. Yeah, yeah. He changed the world. He's a great thing. guy. Yeah, he's, he's like this. Thing. But then the Michael Fassbender one, it's not a, you know, cradle to the grave biopic. It's broken up into three acts, like a stage play. It's like 30 minutes before his big keynote presentations on these huge launches, right? And in between that, it's about his relationships with the people he worked with yeah. um, that defines his character. Yeah. Did these arguments 30 minutes before a keynote actually happen? No, they were a compilation of stories of like true to their character, how they behaved and yeah. how they act, right? Did it happen there in that moment? No, but it did happen uh, in another timeline, another place, but it was to drive the character and story and the growth and where they're going yeah. with it, right? How do you do that with stand-up comedy? Yeah. You're just telling a lie. Yeah. People go there and you're seeing a live person speak unless you know that mm -hmm. they're just, I, I'm, I'm here telling. Like, and it's the, the problem with it is that he's telling a lie in guise that it's the truth. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. If it's a lie and it's a blatant lie and everybody knows it's a lie, nobody gets hurt because now we're laughing at this lie. Yeah. He made it sound like it was 100% factual. This is how it went down. And he did it with visual cues yeah like this is real life and with emotional beats yeah right and he slowed down his 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 you know his mm -hmm. cadence and my daughter was hurt yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like i mean i mean but like when you're framing it Fucking and presenting, trash bag. yeah when you're framing it and presenting it that way there's no reason to doubt though you know what yeah. i mean like you don't look at that thinking oh this guy's lying and he's full of shit yeah you're thinking oh wow that's that's pretty heavy and shit, there was man. a conversation too where his writers would confront him like hey this isn't he goes, no, it's fine. You know, it's okay. 
Mm-hmm. It's like, it's I, the point is gonna get across the other way. I was like, no, there is no point if this isn't true. Yeah. There is no point if this is not true. You have nothing. And if your life is already interesting enough as it is, go ahead and work it around that. But once again, it is not about him making people laugh and creating good material about comedy. It's about how do I might make myself look like the victim and look good? Mm. How do I push this agenda? You yeah, know? man. I mean, and and look, it's it's like when somebody like that, um, who who is you know somebody who's like more liberal, and like all of us, we tend to be more liberal with social issues, yeah. right? We see that, we call that out. Yeah, that's bullshit. You know, like you don't do that. You don't fucking lie about shit like that to per- push your political agenda and use right? real people and and. That's something that people need to practice a lot more of these days. I'm not gonna mention anything specific, but when your side, so to speak, is bullshitting and lying and grifting, you gotta call him out on that shit, right? And Hassan is no exception. The fact that he's uh, doing this under the uh, title of a comedian is even worse. Yeah. Because it's it's not funny. That it's well, I mean, again, that could be subjective, but to me, it's not that funny. It's objectively not funny. Yeah. <laughs> and two, you're fucking straight up lying. You're not you're you're, you're making up stories to make your again, make yourself seem like the victim, the hero, and a martyr. So what happens to the other side of the, you know, let's say the conservatives, right? They see Juicy Smollier's story and then and then they see Hassan Minaj's story. And what do they say? See, white people aren't out there doing this shit. Mm-hmm. They're making it up. Mm-hmm. And they'll, they'll just stop to say, we're all lying, right? Like, e- even the shit that happened to me, I've told many stories of the racial attacks that I've lived through, through school and my grocery store, my gas station, all that. Like, those experiences, like, really happened. They felt fucking terrible. You yeah, know? absolutely. But when I tell it, I retell it so that people will laugh because I don't want people ending up being angry for me the, the way I was left feeling because it, mm-hmm. it's not good. That kind of emotional manipulation, like I could do that. I could tell these stories in a way to make the audience start hating white people yeah. if I was an, a piece of shit like that, Yeah, you know, or make you think some certain way. Don't go out there. You, you know, it's dangerous or whatever, right? Because on the other side of that too, you know what happens when I go back home, and I and I tell people, yeah, I'm 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 here from L.A. They go, oh, L, you live in L.A. Yeah, because they literally think yeah. it's a hellscape. Yeah, I mean, yeah, look, Skid Row is bad. The homelessness problem is bad. But you know what? Every major city in America has a homelessness issue. It's not just here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, every major city in America is bussing over their homeless into Skid Row. Yeah, 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 yeah. How are there 80,000 homeless people in LA? Are they all from LA? No. No, <laughs> no for no, sure, for not. sure not, for you sure know? not. Yeah. All of this is doing is creating more chaos. And honestly, like for me with, like, like I said, I'm not trying to victimize myself. I'm trying to make the, the situations I've been to through funny, but I have to admit, yes, I was a victim in these things. You know, and what I experience from other people, let me say, is a lot of empathy and a lot of support from my friends. Because what I realize from people in L.A. is because that racist sh- shit doesn't always happen all the time every day in L.A. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not experiencing that at all. People leave each other alone, right? But they see these crazy stories on the Internet and people in L.A., I've said it before, have that vicarious PTSD. Yes. That this bad shit is happening, so we can't l- allow it to happen. Even Good if it's not pay. happening to them personally. It's not happening to them personally. No, there was actually a recent segment on Fox News where they were trying to paint Seattle like that. I saw that. You clip. saw that? Oh, really? <laughs> of course I yeah. saw that clip. They, they were trying to show all these homeless people and like they were painting it like there's all these drug addicts everywhere. And then they interviewed locals. Like, no, it's fine. Like, yeah. nothing, <laughs> yeah. nothing happened. And then, yeah. The, the guy with the mic was like, you know, I just saw a guy shooting up on my way here. He's like, did, goes, did, did, did he hurt you? Yeah, did he hurt you? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, I was in my car. And she goes, oh, oh you were in your car. Yeah, are so you okay? <laughs> and they aired this on yeah. Fox News. Like, this isn't helping you guys. Yeah. Like, what the hell was the point of that? She's like, mind your business. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, there are, I'll tell you this. So when I went to uh, downtown Portland, right? Like, Portland is 
beautiful, like during the mm. summer and stuff like that. Downtown Portland, though, has been affected pretty bad. I was actually yeah. shocked. I, yeah. I went there recently for a wedding. And so if you're from Portland, you can clarify this for me. I only heard this from, you know, a couple of people I was talking to that lived in Portland at the time. Um, and so I, I was there and then I saw a dude tweaking out on the floor, foaming at the fucking mouth. You know, uh, we were walking by, it's this guy screaming to himself, ah, you know, remind me of, of fucking Skid Row. Was it Portland or LA? <laughs> yeah. So I thought it, was, it reminded me of Skid Row. Yeah. And then from in the morning, we were looking for places to eat. And there was like a couple of coffee shops open here and there and a few food spots, but the majority of the places were closed. And I asked why they're like, oh, because, you know, Portland has a law that basically people can camp wherever they want, do whatever. And they uh, decriminalize drug use. Drug use yeah. So the, people are literally shooting up, doing drugs, doing whatever the fuck they want out in the public. They have these tents everywhere, but at five o'clock, they're not allowed to camp there. So they'll clean up at five. <laughs> There's a curfew. There's for, a curfew. For, for, so your, around five o'clock, that's when they, they have to get use. up and move and then restaurants will open up. But in the daytime, no restaurants open up because everybody's just fucking <laughs> shooting up drugs. Wild. That's we'll so wild. It. And then they'll give them a ticket, right? Uh -huh. Because decriminalized, but they're like, I don't fucking have money. Well, what are you going to do if you give a homeless guy a ticket? I mean, you know what I mean? Make what? sure you show up to court. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Or we're going to find you. Like, we're going to come get you. Uh, I don't even show up for my kids. What yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? And so they'll just take the paper and then fucking roll a blunt. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh, hey, Bill, Thanks, it's, it's 459. We got we got to hit the, take that last hit and get out of here. Yeah. You know? Like, uh, man, I personally hate Portland. I mean, because I'm from Seattle, obviously there's like a city robbery. But literally every time I've been there, I haven't had a good time. But the last time I was there, um, it was I was on a road trip and it was during the George Floyd protests. Mm -hmm. So there was like a massive scene going on downtown. And so me and my friends, we were like, we got to get out of here. So I got on an e-scooter and I'm leaving. Right. And this white lady with this black leather jacket, these big Gucci sunglasses and of course, designer bag with a coffee in our hand is is walking my way and i'm going this way right and then she takes a drink of her coffee and i'm coming by and she <laughs> spits her coffee out in front of me and i had to stop and i'm looking at her and she goes the revolution is that way and so because she's going to the protest and i'm trying to leave the city so what am i like a scab or something yeah. you think i signed up for this yeah. I don't like that. I'm getting out of here before you guys, you crazy rich white people do some crazy shit. Dog, I'd be getting sick of like people just thinking they could do whatever they want and not getting socked in the fucking face. <laughs> man. Like man or woman, you spit on somebody. Whatever happens to you after, you have to be willing and ready for those consequences because you just spit at somebody. A mouthful of coffee, dude. Yeah. I was shocked. Like, I'm not saying what? I was soccer in the fucking mouth, but yeah. I'm saying that if she does get socked in the mouth, she's easily going to just start playing victim. Right. I was just trying to go in support of all the atrocities <laughs> and this scam yeah. hit me. So I got to punch Ed right now because he just spit on me. Yeah. That. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm like, but I mean, like, what was I supposed to She, she does that, tells me the revolution's the other way. So you know what? You're right. I turned my fucking e-scooter around like, let's go. <laughs> let's go. You know, a cab. You know? And, you know, people have been really smart now where, you know, in the beginning, we I used to get caught up in all this stuff, too, where people will only show, let's say that was recorded, right? And they would only show a part of something, right? Like they'll show, let's say it was you or somebody else and that lady got socked in the face by this other girl, right? She started wailing on her and they're like, look at this shit. This person hates black people and they don't want to do, but they see the whole video now and the whole video is her spitting at somebody. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? And now we're getting smart about this stuff because people can go ahead and tell, narrate their life however the fuck that they want. You know what I'm saying? And then we just believe anything that we see. And that happens a lot now. And I still get caught up in that stuff where I'll see a video and I'll go, what the fuck? Like, Hold on a second. Let me see the whole video. <laughs> you know? Yeah, for and sure. It always sure. tells a different, almost, a, um, I would say like 80 to 90% of the time, it always tells a different fucking story. Yeah. This is why context fucking matters. Like in this case too, when we go back to Hassan, like your context does matter. You did not tell the truth at all. Yeah. I mean, it. you know, if you can just make up anything to fucking prove a point, that you're trying to make, I mean, think, think of what the world would become. You know what I mean? Like you, you can't do, especially when you're somebody with a platform. You got to be a little bit more responsible with shit like that. Yeah. There was another one where he talked about how 
after 9-11, his mosque oh, yes. was raided oh, yeah. by the FBI yeah. or Homeland no, no, Defense. An undercover. An undercover. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah there was undercover an undercover agent. guy. Yeah. And then he was talking to him about what you're going to do. He said, oh, I'm going to get my pilot's license as a joke. And then um, then the next thing he knew, his head was on the fucking hood yeah. of a car. <laughs> and then everybody was in front of the mosque looking at him like, oh, my God, Hassan. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, I'm sure that shit has happened before to somebody, right? If you're that great of a storyteller, just say this happened to this guy. Dave Chappelle told a compelling story about what happened to Emmett Till. Yeah. S millions of people had no idea who Emmett Till was until yeah. he, he gave that story. It wasn't a story about how he got victimized in Mississippi mm -hmm. while he was visiting. You know, and then he died, and so his mom had to have an open casket funeral for himself. That'd be so funny if he's talking about that as himself. Like, yeah. But you're alive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I came back to saying. tell you guys. Or even if he said, like, it was my baby cousin. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, like, you didn't have to do any of that type of stuff. But once again, like, you know, maybe I'm beating this drum a little too much, but we go back to the story, and it's him on the hood. <laughs> being racially discriminated for this atrocity that happened. He is the martyr once again. Yeah. When easily he could have told that story about somebody else, but if he tells it about somebody else, remember, he's not getting the glory. You're yes. a narcissist. That's the only thing that happens. You can get the audience just as engaged if you're telling a true story that happened to somebody you know or somebody else or goes in the news and you can explain it. So it turned out this guy that he's talking about, once again, is a real person. Yes, and he has no <laughs> clue what the fuck he he's talking know. about. He was in, apparently he was in jail at the time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he was. was. Like, he was like, I was in jail. Yeah. At the, how, that's not even possible. Yeah, the timeline's not matching up. And then this moralless fucking bastard just goes like, yeah, I lied. Like it's absolutely nothing. Like, you fucking piece of shit. Yeah. You're I, literally a trash bag. You know, that makes you wonder how he even found out about this guy in the first place to, to use his name yeah. as and, the undercover. And call you know, him a narc? Yeah. yeah. Like, what? <laughs> well, I, no, I think, I think he actually is, like— uh, I, in, in the FBI or something, yeah, right? right, right okay. Yeah, yeah. He he he. Act, but, inform, yeah. but but he was in jail. I don't know what he was in jail for at that time. But yeah, the timeline wasn't matching up there. So so I'm just wondering, like, how the fuck did Hassan he got get his name? Too. You know? That oh, guy, he that yeah, guy got he, got he got docs too. Like I said, he's <laughs> using real people, yeah. and I don't understand why. What's wrong with you? The homecoming one, I think I remember. He actually put up a picture of her from her, her Facebook. And he, and he just blurred her face. That's it. I think that was blurred post oh, in oh, editing. Wow. Oh, but, but it was at the show. It was wow. like her name and her face. Apparently, and she was there at the show too. Yeah, and she was there at the That's show. That's so funny. He just reminds me of that loud, obnoxious dude in high school that thought he was funny all the time. Yeah, and you'd then, say something funny, he'll say it louder to get people. Exactly, a hundred percent. And like you know what? Like Indian people know this too. What is the biggest name? negative Indian stereotype. It's actually not the whole curry thing. It's that they're fucking habitual liars. <laughs> like in the Asian community, the biggest thing that Asian people shit on Indian people for is that they're habitual fucking liars because they're great storytellers. Right. And it's like, dog, you're not doing anything for your people right now, dude. <laughs> anything. Yeah. It's like, you like, what, there's like this clip that went viral, which was, I, I think it was like Gordon Ramsay talking to this um, a guy who makes an amazing biryani, right? And he goes, how old are you? He goes, 140 years old. And you, I'm not, it's not the exact numbers, but go watch. It's like 100. He's like, wait, what? How are you 140? He goes, yeah, he's 140 years old. And that number keeps changing constantly as he's yeah. telling it. And it's like, <laughs> that's like the, the biggest stereotype about but, Indian people but within there, the Asian But it's like, it's yeah. like, clearly you can tell, yeah. right? The emotional truth behind that is that we revere this elderly man. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares about how old he is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or, or, or his emotional truth is that he feels that old, yeah. you know? Yeah. That he's been through so much life that he feels that yeah, old. And then you'll, you know, we'll, you can go through any like comics, like storytelling, or if they've been on podcasts, you can go through my stuff. Like I'll tell the same stories, but little small things change all the time, right? Because the parts that I'm embellishing, I don't remember. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't remember. Right? Or if I'm trying to hide somebody's identity, the yeah. name will change. Right. Like the scenarios will change a little bit because I'm actually a decent fucking human being. And if I'm using real people, I'm going to change the fucking name and change the scenario a little bit, you fucking trash bag. But what's worth, what, what's worse, guys? The emotional truth, the, the the type of person who who justifies by saying, you know, that's my emotional truth, or the type of person who justifies by saying there is no truth. Yeah. Yeah. I don't fucking worse. <laughs> I'm just gonna use that in court all the time. Yeah. Like they're gonna clock me in for speeding it's at like, hundred miles per hour. That's your truth. My emotional truth yeah. said sixty. <laughs> exactly. Your honor, in your eyes, that's murder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to me, I was just helping them get to the afterlife like, faster. And, and these people are just like, I'll go back to that story where I told that girl was just screaming, This is my truth. This is my truth. And like 
what she did outright physically harm people like it affected everybody's personal lives and the only thing she kept screaming like a maniac was this is my truth this is my truth and everybody just went dead silent like th this didn't happen though so what what are we saying here what why are we having this conversation yeah. and that's what it left that's where we left I, it at. yeah that this is my truth is like to let's agree to disagree on the objective facts yeah like, no, we don't agree to disagree no, on objective it's a, facts. Yeah, it's They're only just facts. Yeah, it's only the truth. Yeah. There's not my truth. There's not an emotional. It's like, the truth, a fact. There's this is how I feel, yeah. and then there's this is what happened. Those are very two different things. Yeah. yeah, right. So if we're having, let's say we're having a discussion about, let's say, a car accident. Right, I crash into your car. Right, you were parking and I fucking T-bone you. And then you say, dude, you crashed in my car. I was like, that's how you see it. Yeah, exactly. Emotionally speaking, your car shouldn't have been there, right? And then we're just, then there's like a deliberation with like our insurance companies about the emotional truth. Or are we talking about what actually yeah. fucking happened? <laughs> yeah. What the and, fuck are you saying? And, and look, I mean, serious things like that do happen. Like for example, rape accusations, mm -hmm. right? Somebody gets accused of rape and then they end up in prison and, you know, later on you find out, oh, no, actually, yeah, I, I was just pressured yeah. into, into doing that. And look at that for all the other women that need to be believed. Yeah. When they what have does it do actual for accusations. You know, yeah. and like I said, like, I'm, I'm curious to see what other everybody else thinks like, well, and I'm not going to take the comment of like comics lie all the time. We've already delineated the difference. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's that's a given. That's yeah. a given that in comedy that comics lie. Yeah. But again, it's what are you lying about and how are you lying about it? Yeah. You know? and what's and for, the end goal? Yeah. yeah. And why are you lying right. about it? Right. And for Hassan, it was to glorify himself. Yes. Yeah. High, yeah. high so level fucking narcissist, dude. Shout outs to Hassan Minhaj. You are not funny. <laughs> You're a piece of fucking shit and I hate you. And I'm pretty sure if we had a conversation face to face which most likely is not going to happen that'd be great if you would though why did <laughs> you come on this podcast? why did you turn me around and i'm like dude this is a really good guy yeah. <laughs> no, i no. like him you know the funny shit is like some of the people who were talking about this whole incident they had had some interaction with Hassan, and some of them would preface it by saying, well, he's a nice guy, you know, and he, he didn't do anything wrong to me, but we got to talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you see him on the LeBron James barbershop talk show? No, I haven't seen oh, any of this. Uninterrupted, right? Yeah. So he's on there with a bunch of other people, but Whoopi, with Whoopi Goldberg. And obviously they start talking about politics and he pissed her off so bad. Cause I think he was saying like, your time is done old people you guys had your chance you fucked it up and then she goes hold on motherfucker <laughs> fuck you fuck you you wow. don't know what i did and what the older black generation did for this country so you can even stand here right now 100 wow. and then he was like he got sunned yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. well like the audacity for like, you may not like whoopi goldberg because she says a lot of stupid shit here and there yeah. you know what i mean but i i i'll say this right for a lot of people who are in this entertainment space who are you know colored or other or whatever the fuck that it is it took somebody else to take those bullets right yeah so it's like for like black entertainment everything in entertainment from our food like to modeling like clothing everything this <laughs> came from like black, black culture black it's culture like you got to give them credit yeah. for it and for you to sit there as like an entertainer who's a colored person in that space who is also darker skin to look at what because like, your time is done you haven't done shit the audacity dude Fuck yeah. out of here, dude. Yeah. Suck my dick. Is essentially saying it's our turn. It's like, hey, motherfucker, can you like relax? Relax. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. I mean, I, I think it's easy for people to forget that there was a whole group of people, many groups of people before us who paved the way yeah. for, for, uh, for everything that we get to enjoy today. You know, uh, when, when, you know, all you're caring about mm -hmm. is just this and that's how you get yeah. your facts and your news don't and know then, shit yeah just reading tweet headlines yeah you know not even clicking in the not reading the article like that happens so much or screenshotting a tweet and with the headline Stupid. and then resharing that no fact checking no fact checking <laughs> well guys that wraps up this episode of the genius brain podcast we actually did a whole podcast on one single fucking one topic, topic. I mean, wow. yeah, lot I mean, to unpack. It, but, but it impacts a lot of things you know yeah 
So uh, in the comments below, if you're listening to this on the audio side, uh, enjoy this. But if you're on the YouTube, make sure you write. What did you guys think about this whole situation? Uh, I'm just curious if you're going to defend Hassan. I'd like to hear your thoughts about that. If you just like him, then you like him. That's fine, too. Uh, Genius Brain every Sunday is at 12 p.m. Um, you could catch uh, Genius Brain everywhere on every audio platform. Ed at Ed to Secret Society. We are dropping our first line of the year very, very, very soon. So stay in tune for that. What I'm rocking right now. Check out a couple of pieces there. You can check Ed at... at <laughs> oh, fuck. There's so many fucking Eds, dude. It's Ed Park and Ed, and Ed Park VP. Ed Park. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> Bible Study at Momo's is Ed's uh, podcast. Check that out as well. Yeah. And we'll see you all next time. Peace. Peace. Fucking Ed, 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 Ed. Oh, I gotta pee again. Uh, oh, shit.